Dallas Zoo dealing with the COVID outbreak among the gorillas. Good morning to the Dallas Zoo's Harrison Edel, the guy in charge of taking care of all those animals. How does a gorilla get COVID and what do you do to protect the rest of them and humans? Yeah, that's a good question. And it's one that we've wrestled with recently, obviously, too. Uh, we were able to identify the strain of COVID that we're dealing with as Omicron variant. And so we know that that's the one that is the easiest to pass from, from animal to animal, from human to human. Um, so it's perhaps not a surprise that this sneaky virus has found its way into the gorillas um, for, gosh, a year now. Our zoologists who work with our great apes, our big cats, have all been wearing personal protective equipment, the same uh, equipment that doctors and nurses wear in hospitals to try and make sure that we were keeping each other safe and keeping animals safe. Uh, but this variant's pretty tough and it's pretty sneaky. So it still found its way into uh, a couple of our gorillas. Does, do they have any symptoms and does it does it pose any, uh, any risk to the animals? And uh, I know this is like three questions in one. I'm just trying to picture the brave person sticking a Q-tip up the nose of a gorilla. Absolutely, yeah. Um, you know, at this point, uh, they are still essentially asymptomatic. We had some some runny noses and some, and some sniffles, but for the most part, uh, knock on wood, we've been pretty lucky in this case. Um, for a lot of our screening and testing that we've been doing the last year with a number of our animals that we know are sensitive, we've been able to use fecal tests so we don't have to get too close to a gorilla's nose. But I would say that now that we've got uh, some positives in that group, we've been doing some, some up close testing, which does involve a swab up the nose. And a few of our animals, including a couple of our tigers, a couple of our gorillas, uh, have good enough relationships with the zoologists that we can do a test like that. And, and it's minimally invasive on the animal. Uh, it's part of their routine now. And yes, the zoologists are incredibly brave, but that data is helpful in, in making sure that we know how to, to best treat the animals. Yeah. Do you, do you think that the infection came from human beings and and do visitors have anything to worry about? Not that I'm going to get close to a tiger. Yeah, we hope that you're never closer than six feet to a tiger or a gorilla at the Dallas Zoo. Um, so the risk to guests is, is non-existent. We're not worried about uh, transmission back to guests at the zoo. Um, you know, in terms of how the gorillas got it in the first place, that's a bit of a mystery. Uh, but we know that our team is taking extra precautions now and, and being especially uh, careful to make sure that we're isolating that group, isolating the keepers that work with that group of animals, uh, and, and making sure that we, we do our part to make sure everyone's safe. Yeah. The coronavirus, which, you know, this is just an iteration of the coronavirus, causes the common cold. It's been around for a gazillion years, uh, and it's in the wild as well. There, we, we've heard about a risk of infected deer. Um, is this just something that's unavoidable, that the, if, you're a, if you're a mammal, you're going to get a coronavirus? You know, there are a lot of different types of coronavirus. They're, they're extremely adaptable. They change quickly. Um, so it's, it's not a surprise that this one is adaptable enough to hop between species. Um, and, you know, over the last year or so, we've learned a lot about uh, how coronavirus uh, affects uh, exotic species in human care. So um, hippopotamus, uh, hyenas, big cats, hmm. snow leopards, especially great apes, uh, binturongs, anteaters, a lot of different species are, are uh, susceptible to the same coronavirus that we carry. Uh, but similarly, too, in, in the case of deer here in the U.S., a number of which are positive for coronavirus, there's certainly the chance that it mutates again and, and hops back yeah. and forth uh, to or from humans. So it's something we're, we're taking really seriously here. Obviously. Uh, Harrison, I know you're not in the marketing department, but we want to mention final two weeks right, of Penguin Days, reduced admission That's at correct. the Dallas Zoo. Yeah. could be a nice weekend to go out and visit the animals from a distance at the Dallas Zoo. Thanks so much <laughs> for joining us. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, Tim. I appreciate it.